Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to be shooting at 5 gallon water jugs just like this one here at a distance of 300 yards using 556, 762 by 51, and 308. We'll start by taking a quick look at the speed and energy numbers and then we'll come right back out here to give these water jugs what they've had coming to them for a long time. The bullet on the far left is the 556 77 grain open tip match. In the middle is the 762 by 51 147 grain ball from Magtech. And on the far right is the 308 168 grain hollow point. It is the federal gold medal match. Those will be the three bullets that we'll be shooting today. When I first thought about making this video, I wanted to see how the very best of what 556 had to offer would stand up when being compared next to just the regular everyday 762 by 51 NATO ball. But then I thought, why stop there? Why not also compare apples to apples? Why not also compare it next to one of the better rounds that you could shoot in 762 by 51 or 308? So here we are. Now on the surface of it, it certainly wouldn't seem like that 556 has really much of a chance at all against either of those two bullets on the right. But let's take them apart and see what the projectiles actually look like. Well, if it still seems like it's a pretty impossible task, that's probably because it is. It looks like that's not actually the 77 grain bullet on the far left. That's actually the 55 grain bullet that I put in there just simply for comparison's sake. We'll see if we can put that 77 grain bullet in there in a moment though. Well, that 55 grain bullet has now been bumped over to the far left. The 77 grain bullet is just next to it. Next you have the 147 grain NATO ball. And on the far right is that 168 grain federal gold medal match bullet. Now keep this in mind, the only real advantage that the 77 grain bullet may have over that 147 grain or over the 168 grain bullet is speed. But also keep in mind that we're not shooting these water jugs at a distance of 100 yards, we're shooting them at 300 yards. All of these bullets are going to slow down by then. But that 77 grain bullet will slow down at a much faster rate than the other two will. So ultimately, aren't we just betting on two bigger bullets against a smaller bullet with relatively the same speed out there at 300 yards? Let's take a look at the numbers and find out. Well, here are the numbers. I have run all of these through a chronograph more than once to be pretty sure of these numbers. That 168 grain gold medal match through a 16 inch uh, barrel that we were using that day came in at about 2446 feet per second worth of speed. That translates into 2231 foot-pounds of energy. Again, this is all at the muzzle though. That 147 grain NATO ball, which is in the middle, came in at 2610 feet per second on the speed, 2223 foot-pounds of energy. And that 77 grain bullet was the fastest, 2913 feet per second on the speed, translating into 1451 foot-pounds of energy. But again, that's at the muzzle. What does all that mean? Well, the, for, the uh, 147 grain bullet is going to be 6.7% faster than the 168 at the muzzle. And that 77 grain bullet will be 11.6% faster than the 147 grain bullet at the muzzle. As far as the energy numbers on the 308 and the 762 by 51, it's basically a dead heat at the muzzle. And then on that 77 grain bullet, it's got 34.7% less energy than that 147 grain bullet does at the muzzle. Well, now for the numbers that matter the most. How will these bullets be performing at 300 yards? On the left, that 168 grain bullet should arrive with a speed of about 1,925 feet per second, delivering 1,382 foot-pounds worth of energy. The 147 grain NATO ball will be a little bit faster. It'll be 1988 feet per second worth of speed, although it's a little bit less energy than that 168 grain, only 1290 foot pounds of energy. That 77 grain 556 bullet will have the most speed, 2188 feet per second worth of speed, 818 foot pounds of energy. Now at this point, the 147 grain NATO ball no longer is leading that 168 grain bullet by 6.7% speed. It's only leading it by 3.2% more in speed. 
and instead of being even on foot pounds, now it has 6.6% less energy than that 168 grain bullet does. In terms of the 77 grain bullet, it's no longer 11.6% faster than the 147. Now it's only 10% faster. In terms of being less energy, rather than being 34.7% less energy than the 147, now it might have a bigger problem. Now it's only 36. Point, now it's actually 36.5% less energy. So as far as how we're going to do this, we'll start off with the slowest bullet first and then just work our way toward the fastest and see how this uh, works out. So we'll start it with the uh, 168 grain bullet and then we'll see what happens when the 147 grain bullet hits it with just a little bit more speed but less energy overall. And then we'll see what happens when that 77 grain bullet hits it. Yes, it'll have the most speed, but is it just giving up too much weight and too much size to really matter? We'll find out. We'll be shooting at this five gallon water jug from a distance of 300 yards using 308. The ammunition will be the 168 grain Federal gold medal match. The rifle will be the Ruger SFAR 16 inch barrel. Well, we're walking up right now to the five gallon water jug that was just hit at a distance of 300 yards using 308. The ammunition once again was the 168 grain Federal gold medal match. As you might have been able to see, it actually lifted this water jug off the ground. Now it'd be one thing if it did that from 50 yards or maybe 100 yards, but it did that from a distance of 300 yards. That water jug weighs roughly 41 and a half pounds. For my metric friends, that's almost 19 kilograms. Let's see what happened here. It looks like this would be the exit out the back side. And the, uh, looks like the cap that was on it that was actually screwed on pretty tight, blew right off of there. On the entrance side, let's see what we have. Here's the target I was aiming at. I was maybe about an inch low to the right on the entrance, just off of paper. But again, at 300 yards, I'll take that any day of the week. And any real damage to the bottom, I don't think so. No real damage on the bottom side. It just simply lifted it off the ground and put a pretty big exit hole on the, uh, on the back side. We'll be shooting at this five gallon water jug distance 300 yards using 762 by 51. The ammunition will be the 147 grain ball by Magtech. The rifle, once again, will be the Ruger SFAR 16 inch barrel. Well, we're walking up right now to the five gallon water jug that was just hit at a distance of 300 yards using 762 by 51, 147 grain NATO ball by Magtech. As far as the shot placement, we were probably a little bit left of uh, center, but at 300 yards in bulk ammo. We'll take that any day of the week. As far as uh, the water jug, it looks like it's pretty well mangled. It would appear that the bullet probably just ripped right through the whole thing. Went right out the back, right there. Um, no damage to the bottom, 
just some hydrostatic damage all along the side. And the top of it was almost blown completely off. The top is just, I mean, talk about literally hanging by a thread. I, yeah, the top is just literally hanging by a thread at this point. We'll be shooting at this five gallon water jug from a distance of 300 yards using 5.56. Five, the ammunition will be the 77 grain open tip match by Sig Sauer. The rifle will be an AR-15 18 inch barrel, one and eight twist. Well, we're walking up right now to the water jug that was just hit at a distance of 300 yards using 5.56, 77 grain open tip match by Sig Sauer. I saw the hit through the scope and I knew it'd be pretty bad, but I didn't think it was going to be quite this rough. The word eviscerated comes to mind. If you look right here, you can see the sticker that was on the water jug. That's what I was aiming at. I didn't quite make contact with the sticker but I'm guessing the bullet didn't care or it hit it close enough to dead center to where it just didn't matter. Let's try to find out where in the world I may have hit this thing. It looks like that's probably an entrance hole right there. So if we maybe piece this guy back together, if that's even possible, it's like an accordion at this point. There's your entrance hole right there. It's, yeah, it is an accordion basically at this point. And I'm sure that that bullet just ripped right out the back. I don't see any fragments of bullet uh, down in there whatsoever. What you're looking at here is the exact moment of impact on that 308 168 grain hollow point before we start to zoom in, also known as frame one. Well, this is frame one now that we've zoomed in on it. And as you can see, that is the temporary body cavity that is forming just to the left of the orange sticker. In frame two here, you can see that the temporary body cavity is starting to get a little bit larger and it's going to start to make its way toward the back wall. In frame three here, you can see the temporary body cavity turning into a pressure wave and starting to hit that back wall. Well, here in frame four, as you can see, that pressure wave is really hitting that back wall for all it's worth at this point. Well, here in frame five and in frame six that follows, you can see that that pressure wave is starting to just dissipate, starting to lose energy. So at this point, I'm gonna just go ahead and play this whole slow-mo video for you, and I'm gonna slow it down to the slowest speed that I can offer to you. Now that we know what we're looking for, I hope that you can see it on the video. Well, this is the exact moment of impact on that 762 by 51, 147 grain NATO ball before we start to zoom in a little closer. Well, now that we've zoomed in a little bit closer, this is still frame one. And if you'll look just to the left of that orange target, you should be able to see the temporary body cavity forming. Well, here in frame two, as you can see, that temporary body cavity is definitely growing and easily pushing its way through the back of that water jug. Here in frame three, it's just simply more of the same. And here in frame four, it is about the largest temporary body cavity that I've ever been able to record. Well, this is the exact moment of impact on that 556 77 grain hollow point before we zoom in. In a moment, we're gonna zoom in not once, but twice. When we do, I'm gonna direct your attention to that orange sticker. If you'll look right below the orange sticker, you should see something large that looks like a snowflake, for lack of a better word, which is where the bullet impacted the water jug. 
Well, in frames two through five here, I don't think I have any words that can help you with what it is that you're seeing, other than to say that this is simply a massive explosion. Well, due to the length of the explosion, I'm actually moving ahead to frame number 18. And if you look closely, I don't think that it's an exaggeration at all to say that probably out of that five gallons, probably two and a half gallons was in the sky all at once. Well, I'm zooming out as far as I can zoom out here on frame 18, and even still, I'm having a hard time capturing everything in the frame.